a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by. Life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in. Well, welcome back everyone. Well, welcome to the snowy mountains. Uh, there's not a lot of snow around though at the moment, is there? No, we've heard it's maybe a couple of weeks behind yeah. what it's supposed to be for the season. Yeah, we just heard that um, the snow season has been pushed back a couple of weeks. Yeah, so yeah. we are definitely going to be changing directions a little bit. Yeah. Because um, we sort of head this way to get towards the snow and time will get eventually get on top of us and it won't be as, I guess, free as what mm. we have it now. So. Yeah. We've got, we've got to make some decisions and we decided we're going to track back the way we came. We have had a bit of a downer though, haven't we? In that the, our diesel heat has actually blown up on us. So... Yay, um, just another thing. So currently we're, until we get it fixed, we're a bit limited to where we're staying because we don't really want to stay in free camps because we're going to freeze to death. Well, like we can stay in free, free camps, but we just need to wear our whole wardrobe and everything. Because even, <laughs> yeah, even though it's not snowing, it is still bloody freezing here. Yeah, like it is, it is so it is really cold. cold. I mean, it's actually yeah. really nice. This is the first time we've seen like a full mm. morning of sunshine, blue sky in weeks. And I'm yep. not even kidding. Like we've yeah. woken up with the sun coming through our windows yeah, and it's it like awesome. the most amazing feeling ever. Yeah, so, it's really good. Anyway, so even though it's the sun's out, it's still freezing and yeah. the diesel heater was supposed to be the thing that would save us in this area. Yep. Um, but so, how good are the locals here? Oh, they're amazing. So we're in Talbingo mm. and Tim went up to the shops and, you know, chats to everyone as he does. And the people in the shop just went next door and grabbed us a heater to use. Yeah, you know, like, like one to of those keep us warm. column oil heaters. You know, and That's we're just great. like, are you serious? And like, yeah, it's just next door. It's not doing anything. Yeah, yeah just go and grab it. Have it as long as you like. It's for the whole stay. So yeah. I'm like, I just love little towns like this where everyone's just so yeah. friendly and can't help you enough with anything. Yeah, so, it's and we say that we're staying at the van park here because there's power. So we don't have to worry yeah. about the... That's why, Obviously yeah. the oil heater would use up a lot of batteries, so. Yeah, but anyway. But anyway. Look. So we're still staying warm, but yes, we have had to change direction for that. Yeah. Because we've got to get the diesel yeah. heater fixed. Yeah. You'll catch up all about that in, a, in, the, in, Later. A, in a week or so when we get to that, yeah. that episode. But um, we wanted to just do a bit of a follow-up on the previous video we did on the weights of our car and van. So a couple of weeks ago, we did a video uh, where we got weighed in Canberra. Yeah. And we talked all about the... Um, you know, where we're standing and the fact that we're underweight and we're, how happy we were about that. We've had a lot of comments and a lot of questions um, regarding the video and we thought we'd just take the opportunity just for a couple of minutes to go through some of these comments and questions just to clarify a couple of things. And then after that we're going to shoot over to the the part two of our Canberra video. Yeah. Got the dogs down here by the way. So Sorry, I'm just going to feed them treats. Because... Justine's not feeding some wild animal. She's actually <laughs> just trying to keep the dogs in line. I feed you every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, one of the things, or one of the comments, that, or a lot of the comments we've had on the video uh, were comments about weight distribution hitches. Now, uh, as we mentioned in that video, um, we are using a weight distribution hitch on our Ram with our caravan. Yeah. Now, we don't love weight distribution hitches at all. As a matter of fact, I would rather not have one. Um, but in our current situation, it actually is a means to an end because what it's doing is it's taking the weight off our rear axle onto our front axle. Yeah. Um, now, as most of you know, uh, Rams, their Achilles heel is that rear axle, rear axle weight. Yeah. You can't go over 1770. Uh, so with our van, uh, you know, with our tow ball mass, um, we're coming in underweight, but if you weren't using that weight distribution hitch, we would actually be over by about 30 kilos. Yeah. And that's with a full tank of fuel and full gas and diesel, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so obviously as, our, as we use the fuel, that starts to, uh, that's, that difference starts to you know, go down. But with a full tank of fuel, without a weight distribution hitch, we would actually be over. Yeah. And, then, and these are all things that we checked yeah. with the people, you know, yeah. the professionals and asked them, you know, yeah. what's the story? How safe is it? Is it good? Is it bad? Mm. Um, well, Ram actually recommend the use of them. Yeah, and then also uh, the original guy that we got weighed with prior to this, Dave, he mm. also said 
the weight distribution hitch is the way to go. Yeah. That's what's going to help you and that's what's going to shift the weight. Yeah, I mean, what it basically does is like a lever, okay? So you're putting a lever under something, you're pulling it up, and that is essentially moving some of the weight that came from the front axle onto the rear axle when the tow ball goes onto the car, moving some of that weight back onto the front axle. I think it moved yeah. like 90 kilos back onto the front axle, which is yeah. a significant amount of weight, isn't it? Yeah. But obviously, just the mention of weight distribution hitches, people get in a, in a fluster. A lot of people get Yeah, in a everyone has that. such conflicting yeah. ideas and comments and yeah. what they think that's right or wrong. Yeah, and look, so, we don't want to be judge and executioner of it either. We don't really no, know. No, because but, we're not experts. That's no. why we ask the experts. Yeah. And I mean, you know, sometimes experts can be wrong too, but mm. we tend to obviously follow through with yeah. people that are in the industry and who do this for a living. Yeah. Now, one of the one of the comments that we got was, um, look, if you need a weight distribution hitch to be, you know, to be underweight, then you've got a problem with the car. Yeah. Um, and yes, I can definitely see that point of view. Yeah. Um, I think it's a problem with the car, but it's also a problem with the weight you're putting onto the car. I think that's probably the issue. Yeah. Um, and you shouldn't be using it. Uh, and I can definitely see that point of view. Yeah, so yeah, you can understand um, that. 100%. And as we said, we would rather not use it if we could. Yeah, because it's um, heavy and it's bulky. and Yeah, and it's a pain in the neck to put on and off. And, yeah, and the amount of times know. we have over the years yeah. getting it off and yeah, it's and been it's, that. It's before, fairly dangerous you know? too, you know, when you take it off. They always say watch your shins it and stuff. It can spring but... down and anyway, I don't particularly like using it. But look, yes, I can definitely see that point of view. But as well as saying that, what that weight distribution hitch is doing is it's moving weight off that rear axle. Yeah. Um, and to me, being a physics teacher, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, all you're basically doing is putting a lever underneath and shifting that, shifting that weight back. Um, so I think, you know, long term, I think that we will definitely do something about our rear axle weight. Uh, yeah, I think we would actually, we we would like to look into getting the upgrade mm. done yeah. now. Yeah, I think, I think definitely. We have really a few good. ideas that we'd like to get done. Yeah. Um, I guess we just got to find the right person. Mm. To get the job done. Yeah, I think it'll make a great video too. Yeah, it will. It having that upgrade done. But I think maybe when we get back to Queensland, I think that might be something that we'll look into doing. Yeah. Um, and so there was the comments like that. There was also another comment uh, uh, from some from some people saying um, having towed with and without a weight distribution hitch, there is Minica? there is not a hope in hell I would travel any distance without hooking it all up. Um, really? And that's uh, and you know and I've I've we've also travelled with and without a weight distribution hitch. And I have definitely noticed a difference when we don't have it on. I do even, yeah. I'm not even driving. Yeah. I can um, feel it. Because having that weight on, back onto the front axle, your steering gets heavier, which yeah. is what you want. You don't want light steering. No. And also, look, I mean, if, you're, if the nose of your car is pointing slightly up, that's going to be increasing your stopping distance. Um, and even if it's only a matter of 10 metres, that 10 metres could be a difference between having an accident and not having an accident. Yeah, and that's right. Um, I definitely feel a lot safer with the weight distribution hitch on. And, and as this yeah. particular person who commented, they felt that way too. And I think the majority of people that you have this conversation with, and we do have this conversation with a lot of people, mm. um, I would say more than half are 100% for the weight distribution mm. hitch. And in that percentage are the people who are the professionals and the people mm. who have tested it and the people who looked at weights and things like that. They all are on the, yes, use it. No, mm. it wasn't necessarily, yes, you have to use it, but yeah, if it was me, I would use it. Mm. So it's always gonna be a debate yeah. with or without. It's, that debate will never end. Mm, I, it will never but end. But at the end of the day, I think yeah. you just need to respect each other's decisions and it's yeah. not about fighting about and who's no. right and wrong it's just we've, your personal choice and what you choose to use for us we've towed a lot of kilometers with it on yeah we? and it, it genuinely feels a lot more a lot safer with it on than off yeah um so yeah as i said but if we did get a if we did get a get a, a rear axle upgrade We'd also want to get it to a point where we're not going to have that problem of it sagging at all. You know, yeah. I'd, want it, I'd want to have the car really level. Yeah, definitely. Um, so have that same effect of having the weight distribution hitch on. Yeah, I mean, if even people out there who've got a Ram and you all have your different types of upgrades, mm. love to know what upgrades you chose yeah, and it. why. Comment you know, below, mate. Did you get the full everything done? Mm. Because you just want to be covered for everything just in case, or did you sort of need that mid-range, or mm. did you just get that little 
that little mm. bit just to get you over the line without having mm. to worry about the weights. Yeah, you know, it, it is also a financial thing as well. I mean, yeah, it's not you know, cheap to get your getting, upgrades. Getting a GVM upgrade or rear axle upgrade on a Ram is up close to the ten thousand dollar mark. Yeah, it's not cheap. You know, and it's not something that, um, you know, for us is is something we want to rush right into because that ten thousand yeah. dollars is, you know, you that's know, substantial six, when six you're on the road. Six months on the road. Yeah, you know? that's a lot. So it, it makes a big difference for us. Other people saying that they tow with a weight distribution hitch and it just gives them peace of mind, um, and I definitely understand that as well. Yeah. Um, so really mixed mixed reviews, mixed comments, yeah. um, as it always is. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, but there was one, there was also a comment about um, the insurance yeah, yeah. not covering. So this is getting onto weights, yeah. weights now, which is the next thing uh, that I, we wanted to talk about. So, um, look, there was a comment from uh, someone talking about that if you were to get into an accident, um, the weight that you would be weighed on would be as if all your tanks were full. Yeah. And uh, we've heard this before. In fact, we actually spoke to a weight expert, Dave, down up in the sunny coast. I'll put a link to that video above here. We actually spoke to Dave about it, and this was the, one of the exact questions we brought up with him. And I've heard this before. If you were to have an accident, your weight would be weighed as if your tanks were full, even though they were not full. Yeah. Um, and... I struggled to, I, I sort of understood what the question was, but I struggled to actually believe that that would actually be the case. And again, I'm no expert, I'm no lawyer. Yeah. Um, but when we, spoke, when we spoke to Dave about this particular situation, he said, look, that would be like saying to someone, someone was, someone's driving a really fast Ferrari and they were pulled over. And they were traveling the speed limit, they were pulled over and the policeman went up to them and said, look, I know you weren't speeding, but I know that your car can travel at 220 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to book you for speeding, even though I know you weren't. Yeah. Because I know your car can. Um, that would just be ludicrous. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. You, according to what Dave said in the video, he said, if you were in an accident, your weight will be what it was on the time or at the time of the accident. Yeah. Um, now, that's from... That's from a legal standpoint. I don't know what what um, insurance companies will say, but I would imagine that they would have to be within the law. Yeah, but I mean, that's something that we're actually just going to follow up in regards mm. to that question yeah. um, and actually check with the insurance company and actually ask them that question yeah. straight out yeah. and say, what is the situation mm. if there was an accident? How do you weigh, how do you mm. cover you know, your claim if something was to happen. Mm. Um, it's, yeah. just an inter it's just interesting to, to consider that and actually go mm. and ask them and find that question out. Mm. Exactly, we've heard it from the weight person, but then, you mm. know, let's find out from the insurance company and see what they yeah. have to say. Uh, I, I have checked our insurance policy and there's no mention of that anywhere in, in the policy at all. So yeah. I don't know what the actual what their actual standpoint is, but we will find out. But we actually want it just for our own benefit yeah. and then to let you guys know what mm. um, they've informed us with. And so. this is something that goes around on social media, you know, on in the Facebook forums and things like that, yeah. where people say this and it definitely gets you thinking. I mean, even if that was the case, we would be fine because yeah. we would still be under our GCM and GVM. But um, It's just uh, interesting to know. But I know a lot of people are writing that line, but it doesn't necessarily make sense to me. And if that was the case, that would be highway robbery. I would imagine that a case could be brought up, you know, yeah. uh, saying, well, hang on, I wasn't underweight. Just because overweight. I have overweight, just because I have the capability of being overweight, yeah. doesn't necessarily mean I broke the law, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing. The other, a couple of other um, questions people have asked us. Um, now, our, our current tow ball to mass of the car uh, is, we're sitting at 8.6%. 8, 8 in other words, 8.6% of the van um, is on our tow ball. And, and we've had a couple of comments saying, oh, you need to be 10%. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the golden rule. So if you have a 3.5 ton van, you should have 350 on the ball. Uh, well, we're, uh, we're under that. So we're, we're at about 8.6%. Um, and people are saying, well, you know, what you're doing is unsafe and so on. And again, that's something else I also um, caught up with the people who weighed our van with. And they said, no, it's actually anywhere between 8 and 11%. That's where you should be. Yeah. So we're at 8.6. So we're, we're within that 
we were then that that uh, yeah so um, but again you would imagine that you wouldn't want a too light of ball weight on the on your on your car because the, I know that would definitely tend to lead to a bit of sway and so on yeah we've had zero sway on our van by the way zero yeah it's been amazing yeah amazing um, not unlike a, one of the one of the older vans we had when we first started traveling we had a lot of sway on that particular van but this one we've had zero and it was a bit it was a bit bigger too mm. that van yep yeah. so I think yeah I think 10% could be a sweet spot sweet spot but I think the actual recommended is between 8 and 11 yeah, so we're, yep. we're, we're in that bracket just. Mm, yeah. Um, now, where are we? Oh, yeah, another one. Another question we had about the weight distribution hitch and the, and the tow ball mass. Um, the question was, well, if you use the weight distribution hitch, isn't that reducing the tow ball mass of the van? Um, and the answer to that question is no, you're not. All the weight distribution hitch is doing is moving the weight from the rear axle back onto the front axle. You're not altering the weight of the van, or of the tow ball at all. Yeah. Uh, and, that's, and that again, I think is also another bit of a misconception as well. And it, it is, it's hard to sort of fathom all this, mm. all these numbers and all the things and all the technology and stuff you need to know and learn about. I mean, I think we're still learning stuff and we'll still keep learning mm. more and more things as things change and you know cars and caravans mm. are changing in different mechanisms so i think that everything will continue to change and it's just going to be a matter of keeping keeping your head above water and just keep um i guess asking the questions and finding out from people you know what they think what their thoughts mm. are but um yeah just sort of help each other out rather than attacking each other because mm. um you know someone might think something and it might be wrong but maybe just explain it to them rather than sort of go on the attack and make them feel a bit silly because they didn't know so mm. Yeah. But, yeah, but overall, I mean, you guys obviously enjoyed the videos on the weights because it's been really, really well received. And, yeah, and we've um, had some amazing comments and um, we really appreciate the questions that we've mm, touched on today mm. because um, there was more than one person asking those yeah. questions and that's why we've sort of, like, I think aimed on those particular questions because yeah. there was obviously a few people questioning that same thing. So yeah. hopefully that's mm. explained it enough. Yeah, I think the... the um, Weights are on everybody's minds at the moment. All of you who have caravans and cars, there's been a massive PR exercise trying to get people underweight. Oh, um, sorry. What does that mean? Does that, that mean our means the ready? washing machines, the washing All right. dryer. We should probably ready. head back and get that sorted. <laughs> sorry, I think that um, went off in the last video. Yeah. It's the sun's out, but we still have to use the dryer. We do. Um, so, uh, obviously, it's in, it's in everybody's forefront. Everyone's thinking about it, which I think is a good thing. Um, it's not like the olden days where you could just hitch up your old VR Holden and hope for the best. It's not like that anymore at all. No. Um, and we, we do see a lot of really badly balanced caravans and cars and rigs on the road, don't we? A lot. And uh, it's just not, it's not only is it safe, unsafe for them, it's unsafe for everybody around, around them as well. So, yeah. so I think it's really important that people try to get these weights right. Um, what are you doing? So the dogs were just about to start wrestling and knock the camera over, so I was just had to quickly distract them because yeah. it would have been we would have been like sideways. All right. Um, so anyway, I think that wraps up I think, yeah. the questions so, for that. Yeah. So um, I'd really like to do a bit of a, a series on 12 volt systems in the van and in cars and so on. Again, we're getting a lot of questions, a lot of people asking us about batteries and so on. And I think we'd probably need to do a little bit of a segment on that. Yeah. So um, keep throwing us your questions mm. and. Um, we'll sort of accumulate them all and we'll put them all together into a video because yep. um, that way I think it's just easy to go, yep, okay, yep. look, we're going to do answer your questions so then everyone can just jump on if they've yep. asked a question and then we can try and give some feedback. So yep. we try and cover the questions that are asked the most mm. um, just because we get a lot of questions and we yep. can't really get all of those answers into one video. And yep. I guess we try to answer you directly online as well. Mm. Um, but we'll try and do more in-depth ones for those ones that are repeat questions. Yeah, exactly. So the rest um, of the video is the final bit um wow. it's okay there's some fireworks going off during the day there are that's really bizarre is that fireworks yes that's fireworks that's the most bizarre thing you've seen that's really distracting well we should probably the, go the dogs are actually doing really well they're just um, doing their thing we should probably go um <laughs> yeah. but look the rest of the video is our second part of canberra yeah so part um, two and this is on the war memorial um, and Cockington Gardens. And Cockington Gardens, but the War Memorial was really touching, and yeah, yeah, it was it was an the amazing. The War Memorial day. in Canberra is just 
incredible and they're doing a massive a massive refurb aren't they yeah so in the very beginning of the video um, that's the beginning of the refurb and what it's going to look like when the refurb has finished so yeah. that's just a, a model of it so I just thought it's just it's gonna be incredible I can't wait to actually go back there when they have finished that refurb yep. and oh, see yeah. it again because it was quite an emotional day mm. um, Riley got really emotional but I guess, I guess he's like his mum, I don't know. But it was really touching to see how emotional yeah. he was and how he took it all on board and he was reading everything and just really understanding, I guess, mm. what it's all about. Because I don't think he would have got that same um, feeling and that same emotional response had he been in a, you know, a huge classroom environment mm. with his school excursion or something. Um, because we did watch a lot of those come through and a lot of the kids just weren't really paying attention and mucking around with each other. Um, so that was really special for me to watch mm. um, and just see how he reacts. So he really understands a lot more about the war. I think it's important too, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's really important. Yeah. But anyway, All right, well, that's the next part. Yeah, enjoy the rest of the vid and uh, we'll catch up in midweek. We've got a Van Days episode coming up on Wednesday, don't we? Yes, a rainy Van Days episode yeah. midweek. So um, that's coming on Wednesday and we'll catch up next week with another video. Yes, down in the snowies. Yeah, all right. Hopefully we'll have some snow then, hey? Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys next week. Have a great day. See ya. All right, so a very chilly start to the day. It was minus 3.9 degrees. Really? And like that was six. And that was the actual temperature. It felt like minus seven. That's what it said on the bomb. So anyway, super cold. We had ice everywhere. The water in the pipes froze over. Couldn't get any ice out of the, any, any water out of the taps this morning. So I had to go out in the freezing cold and try to de-ice stuff. It was very interesting. But we've got a big day today. We are going to one of Justine's uh, things he's been trying to go to for a long time. Miniature, miniature oh, houses tech. and things. Yeah, the... What's it called? Coventry Cockle. Gardens? No, Cockle something. I don't know. I can't remember the name. Just yeah, we're going there. Remember what we talked about? We're going there. I need to put it in my face. <laughs> Stop. We're going there uh, this morning. Actually, first of all, we've got to drop the dogs off at doggy daycare. They, they went to doggy daycare the other day and it went pretty well. So they're going again today. And then after the miniature houses exhibition, we're going to go to the war memorial. And then we're going to go out for dinner tonight. So we've got a big, big day. It's going to be great. So, hey Andy, welcome. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. Riley, who's, win who's winning? Me. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yes. I can tell who's winning by who's... Oh, your turn! <laughs> or who's the quietest. I can tell by who's winning. So, the boys are occupying themselves with uh, no screens this morning. That was my right. rule this morning, no screens. So they're playing chess. Yay. And I'm making lunch because we Check. don't want to keep buying lunch. Yeah. Because it's very expensive here in Canberra. So every time you go out, you can spend a hundred bucks easy to stop yep. lunch. Yeah. So, we're actually going prepared today. All right. Well, let's get cracking. Stop it! You are so annoying! <laughs> All right, so welcome to Cockington Gardens. It's, uh, the gardens are nice. It's pretty, they've planted all the pansies. Yeah, well. The boys are always gone. Yeah. They're keen. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? How Look much does it house. cost? Here we go, general admission. Goodness me. Oh moly. Well. well that's changed in uh, about 30 years. I hope it's worth it. It's so freaking cold. <laughs> We're going on a train ride around Cockington Gardens. Didn't bring my other jacket. The seats are freaking metal. <laughs> Why would you have metal seats? They're not. They just got They're metal. They're metal. Yeah. They're metal. It's wooden. It's so metal. cold. Going out after this and getting my jacket. Oh, you still see our breath. Oh my no, god. I couldn't see it then. Okay. This is like this is how big the train is. Turn it around, show okay. people. <laughs> You're more interested. It's like it's so busy here. Hi. Hi. So exciting. Right. We literally just did a circle in, I think, 
five seconds and now we're going around in another circle oh yeah we've got the two to the horn to go around again for the second time i thought this went through the park as a kid this just was the most exciting thing in the world and then to go around twice would have been like oh my god we're going again whereas i'm an adult and i'm going oh my god we're going again in the same circle what is going on i just want to get off now and go and look at the park probably go around again well, we paid three dollars, so maybe it's a dollar a circle each. Yeah. I don't know. I can't feel my butt. All for that, literally to go around twice. I have to say that was probably the lamest train ride I've been on in my life. You should go up this way. Yeah, go I said we've got to go up to the sun. Are oh, they looking at the footy? Oh, okay. Or soccer? Footy? Football? Oh look, there's a streaker. You see the streaker? He doesn't even know what a streaker is. No. That's why he runs across the footy field, or the soccer field, and they can run. Oh, it's that. I saw you walking the light. Look what I found. That's it. That is the Star Wars. Better than nothing. Hmm. What? Where do you start the maze? Use your eyes and start. I can't see an end. Nor can I. I can't see an end either. I'm not sure I ever will. <laughs> <laughs> way to the Flinders Ranges. disappointing when you have interactive things and none of them are working except for two. All the trains are not on the tracks properly and I just want to go down and actually just put the wheels back on but I don't think I should. I'll probably get kicked out but it's a bit annoying because it looks really cool when the trains are all going around the whole, the whole display. Okay so Cockington Gardens uh, First of all, I reckon hats off to whoever built it because the models and the attention to detail are pretty incredible. The area which have the international, all the international buildings, that I reckon is by far the best. That's really, really good. So a lot, a lot of work's gone into that. It looks incredible. So, um, saying the trains weren't working, um, my event's a bit too cold for them to work. Uh, not sure it was worth the admission fee. Really? Um, it was okay. Hello, buddy. He's gone. It was good. Um, I probably wouldn't come back again. Yes. Sorry, just seen talking to me. Um, yeah, I think for a family of four to come here, costing a hundred dollars. Yeah, I don't know. Not sure. Um, if it's just you, twenty-five bucks isn't too bad to get in. So. Um, 
definitely worthwhile coming I could definitely see some great weddings and things being done here that'd be pretty cool um, love to see the Star Wars reenactment done just that little bit better attention to detail and uh, all the models I reckon I'd give you know, 9 out of 10 to um, yeah overall I'd probably give I don't know, 6 out of 10 I thought it was great, I mean I didn't pay for it <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> pretty good score out of 10 um, I'd give it an 8 I wish the trains were working Eight? That's a good school. If the trains are working, it'd be better. That's true. And there's a bunch of these like things that you can interact with around that just don't do anything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe it's just too cold for the mechanics yeah. to work. Today. A couple, a couple of them, a couple of the machines are working. Yeah. Like, there was one where you like raised a mine shaft. Yeah, that like, was cool. Mine workers up and down. That was pretty cool. sick. A great little camera angle. Score out of ten. Go. Um. I don't know, I'm a little bit deflated actually because this was a really big thing for me to come here and I feel like as a child this was way more exciting. Oh. It was very different, it was a different train, it was a different track. It was just different. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe a six or a seven. Yeah, that's what Just because it. the detail that they go to is yeah. phenomenal and all the bonsai trees, I love yeah. them, the gardens. So like the actual place itself is amazing. Mm. It just wasn't the same experience as when yeah. I was a kid. It's pretty good. Yeah. What do you score it? Out of school. What do you score, score it? Out of ten. Uh, about seven out of ten. Okay. Yeah, see, we oh. actually seven and a half. Okay, yeah. well, Andy gave it an eight, we gave it a six, and he gave it a seven. So that gives about yeah. a seven out of ten. So I reckon that's fair. Yeah, I reckon that's fair. I made a known man. Story. He took out an old pen and wrote something for me. Then he kept walking on down the road, and I watched him disappear. Like smoke, and I thought I'd just seen a ghost. Then I looked down at what he wrote. He said, Son, when you grow up, you'll be fine. I know you've got questions on your mind.
right, so we're back at the caravan. We've had a really awesome day at the War Museum and Cockington Green Gardens or whatever it is. Um, we're back now and we're just flushing out the hose because we had a bit of a blockage. Come on, I've got cold hands. Don't you dare. Can you put the hose on? Yeah, I can. Would you like to put the hose on? Yes. The water's going everywhere, babe. I'm just waiting for you to put the hose on. He's supposed to have that in the garden. So instead of having a nice clean cement, which is just going to turn to an ice skating rink, he decides to just chuck it where he should go. Um, what I'm turning the hose on, are you ready? Yeah. This will be fine. I hope it spurts up in his face. I want to move the hose, the bucket a bit closer to you. We're doing a noise, uh, annoying noises to Justine. <laughs> Which is? Oh, shut up. Do you want to do tennis? Oh Go. my god, shut up! <laughs> do you know like I'm <laughs> trying to drive and concentrate? You guys are so annoying. Someone's blinding me. I think I know how to blind. Stop! <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're all boys who are all annoying. Okay, don't do the water drip. That's even more annoying. Timothy? Sip it. That was a good one. But what do you think about this, Mum? I'm driving, mate. Because in Canberra, it just automatically says form one lane with tons of traffic. So uh, it does. Zzz. Why are you what? <laughs> Timothy? Yes. Stop it. Stop what? Stop being annoying. Can you tell the sun to go away? Am I being annoying? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you always are. Your hair's really long, baby. I'm gonna cut it all off. Don't, what are you doing? Yeah. People don't care how long my hair is. Can, what, can you just do you? Make your funny noises into the camera. Show people what you're doing <laughs> to me. Tell them what, explain the words and the stuff that I have to deal with and why you're doing it. Well, we were in, the, Questicon. Questicon yesterday, and we're looking at the period of periodical elements, and there was. I have no idea what is. The element X E N O N, and Justine was calling it Exonon. I said, "How do you pronounce it?" Because it's clearly not pronounced how it's spelt. Well, that's how I, That's what I said. The way it's pronounced is Xenon. X E N O N is Xenon. But Justine's having an argument with me, saying that can't be it because X E doesn't create the sound Z. But I'm saying it's not actually English, it's actually Latin. Because the periodic elements come from Latin, from Latin origin. That's why gold is AU, because the Latin word for gold is aurum. What? Do you know what? You just need to shut up. Just, they don't believe me that, that lead, the chemical formula for lead is PB. And that's because the Latin word for lead is plum bum. <laughs> It's, it's true. <laughs> you just like saying. So we are, it's our last day today, so we thought we'd come out for lunch to this pub, the Kingston Hotel. Yeah. And this is where you can bring your dogs, and they actually have menus in there for your dogs. So you actually have meals. So Riley's going to look it up and just, I can't remember exactly what was in there. It's right there in the bottom corner. There you go. I don't know if you can see that. Want to focus? There you go. For your little mate. Like that is so cool. I didn't notice that. Wait, you, did you not see it? Steak lightly fried. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Bet Millie would love that. Yeah. Well, she's being really naughty today. I'm not impressed. You naughty girl. Steak is always being the perfect dog. Not. Ahsoka is a perfect dog. She's a stirrer. That's because she's strong with the force. Ugh, please. And Riley's finishing up some of his schoolwork still. About so drugs. About drugs. So what, yeah, what subject, what subject is it though? Health. Yeah. So you're learning about what? Drugs. Legal and illegal. Oh, legal and legal drugs. Illegal and legal drugs. Yeah. Because, you know, these days these are the kind of things that the kids need to be learning about. So he has to do a poster explaining illegal drugs and legal drugs, the goods and the bads with it all. So he spent most of the morning on getting all the information. Now he's just colouring it all in and turning it into a poster. So it's a beautiful day, still pretty cold. 
but we're looking forward to heading off tomorrow. So we're going to enjoy our lunch and I'm hopefully going to put this puppy to sleep so I can actually relax and enjoy our last lunch in Canberra. Cause I'm on my way